Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bridgen and I am the Museum Stitcher here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram. Welcome to a very special episode. Today is my 2000 subscriber celebration. So to all of those subscribers and my returning viewers, welcome back. And if you're new here, this is a good episode to tune into. Um, this is my channel where I talk about cross stitch, but also about the other crafts that I do. Today I have a couple sewing finishes to share with you, which are actually for you guys because of the big giant 2000 subscriber giveaway. Um, I hit 2000 subscribers, I think about two weeks ago now, but I just finally finished putting the finishing touches on the giveaway and getting everything all ready. So I thought I would hop on here and uh, tell you guys a little bit about what you can win um, as a little bit of a thank you from me. Uh, for supporting my channel and for watching my content and for being generally so kind and amazing. Um, so it's a really great giveaway. We're going to talk about that a little later. I also want to share a little bit of information about my trip to the attic. I went to the attic needlework in Mesa last week when I was in Arizona and it was fabulous and I've got some good stuff that I bought there. So I know it's a little bit early. It's only been about a week since my last video. Um, but I have enough to share that <laughs> I thought I would sit down and film and go ahead and get this giveaway started because I've been teasing it for a while now and I'm pretty excited about what I have to give away. It's it's pretty good. I promise you're going to want to stick around. So um, that being said, I've also got some like regular floss tube stuff to talk about. I've got an FFO to share. I have no finishes, but I have some whips uh, that I got some progress on. I mean, it's only been a week and I was out of town for a lot of that, but that being said, I still think I got a good bit to share. So it's going to be a great one. Grab your drink, grab your stitching, or, you know, if you're at work watching Floss Tube, do what you're going to do, girl. But I've got some good stuff to share. So uh, let's start today by doing an FFO. So I fully finished. <sighs> this has got to be one of my favorite cross stitch finishes of all time. Um, this is Modern Tidings by the Forbidden Fiber Company. Round of applause for, for her. Um, this was part of their Valentine's Day at Downton Box. Uh, and this has got to be my favorite pattern they have ever released. And you guys know, I do a lot of Forbidden Fiber Company kits. I very much enjoy working with their materials. Their floss and fabric is fantastic. Um, so Forbidden Fiber Company, <laughs> uh, Leanne and team, if you are watching, please give us more silhouette styles with the quotes. This, this pattern is freaking stunning. So I started this one on January 30th, which was I think like the day after I got the box or something. And uh, I finished it on April 14th. I mean, she's pretty much full coverage. So it was a lot of fill in on her. But, I mean, okay, look at the variegation on her top. That's a one of a kind floss that they dyed for the box. And the quote says, it's the gloomy things that need our help. If everything in the garden is sunny, why meddle? And it, this is Sybil from Downton Abbey. Um, I framed this myself. This is a custom frame that I ordered from Custom Frame Solutions. I highly recommend them if you're looking for an affordable custom frame. You just order your own dimensions and they send it to you and then you do your own framing. So I was able to get the frame and a custom cut piece of museum quality glass, which as a museum professional, I appreciate. Um, so that's why you're getting all of the wonderful ring light glare. Uh, but this, I mean, this pattern is, it's one of my favorites. I'm so, so happy to have it done. It's a very weird size. It's like, I want to say like seven and a quarter by 14 and a quarter inches. Uh, but I'm like obsessed with how it turned out. And I think my framing looks super professional. I got a point driver, which is something that like, so basically as you have your, your frame, my piece is laced my glass and everything in the frame, you actually use this little tool to drive little spikes into the side of the frame and it secures everything down so that like if I shook this, it's not moving. And then I just bought some butcher paper and cut that and I still need to put like a hanger on it. I haven't done that yet, um, but the piece is finished and I think my lacing is getting pretty dang good. Uh, this piece was a little wonky, especially getting these borders really straight was pretty difficult. But I did it and there's only one noticeable piece of cat hair that made it into the frame. So um, a little bit of Fergus's DNA will be in this piece forever. <laughs> it's like right here and you can see it laying over a stitch. I don't know how I missed it, but I did. So 
that's the one downside, I guess, of, of framing things yourself is, you know, your ironing board has cat hair on it, your everything has cat hair on it, but it's got museum quality glass. I even bought museum quality glass spacers. So they um, actually prevent the glass from directly touching the needlework. So I feel majorly fancy with this one. And I wanted the frame to be very Belle Epoque and like it would be hanging in Downton in, in High Clear Castle. Um, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I'm obsessed and I need to hang it up. Like I'm thinking it's probably going to go like right here because I just want to stare at it all the time. Well, that's, you know, if <laughs> I can get the ring light glare off of it, because I don't, you guys would want to see like ring light glare every single video, but you know, maybe you do. It'd be worth it for that piece. I tell you what. Okay. So uh, I'm going to get on a soapbox for a minute. It's only going to be a minute. Don't worry about it. Um, in every single one of my videos, aside from my first two, I think, I told myself I was going to do no new starts and every single video except for my first two I broke that no new starts um, so I have decided that I'm going to stop holding myself to some invisible standard about how many starts that I can have and I'm just gonna start things when I start things I'm not gonna apologize for it I'm not going to say I'm not gonna do anymore because inevitably I break it and then I feel bad and that's just not good so that being said I started something but there was a very specific reason for it so, um, I did have a new start. <laughs> I started this on July 22nd, which was the day that I left for Arizona. Um, and I started this because I wanted a project on Ada. None of my current whips are on Ada. And I wanted something that had easy holes, that was easy to see, something that was, you know, super, super simple. So that if I got on the plane and I had crappy light and I didn't want to work on my Miss Bingley's library, that I could just crank that out if I if I didn't have light and so I started this because it was in my kit pile um there's a stitch along going around called the kit and caboodle style which is I think it was started by mama bear stitchery here on floss tube it's basically where you go through your pile of kits and you pull one out and you work on it every month uh because we all have a lot of kits I think um especially if you're someone like me who buys in advance because you're like so excited about seeing a pattern you kit it up and then you don't start it for a while. So um, I have a lot of Forbidden Fiber Company kits, like I said, and this is one of those. So this is this pattern is called um, All These Books and it came in this cute little bag. It was part of their bookish box that came out in March. It was like a whole book themed cross stitch. And I will insert a picture of what the pattern looks like here. Uh, exciting news, this week they actually dropped the pattern on their website. So anyone can purchase the pattern and I believe all of the call for flosses as well. So if you wanna get this up, you can now. Um, but here is where I got to. So I only worked on this for like two days. I, this is a super quick stitch. I think the stitch count, it's like 60 by 90 or something. So it's pretty small. Um, I am doing my own floss conversion. So I did get the kit and it had everything to go with it, but all of the flosses in this pattern were pretty bright. Uh, you know, like a really, really bright red and a bright blue and a bright green. And I just wanted to kind of tone it down a little bit, make it a little bit more neutral. And so I pulled out, I had actually bought an extra floss pack of the Leo and Roxy Floss Co. March pack, which I love the way those flosses look together. And I was like, I gotta find something that I can do all of those flosses together. This is the one. I only had to add one more Leo and Roxy, which was the color Artichoke, but here are all of my flosses. Wow, that is a hot mess floss ring, isn't it? Anyway, um, so I have Milkshake, Artichoke, which is the one I added in, then Truffle, Bellini, Deja Blue, and sugar plum. So anyway, I will be happy to share which floss I subbed for which one. If you bought the March uh, Leo and Roxy, I think it's the neutrals floss pack. I could be wrong, uh, but I think it was the neutrals one. Um, so if you're interested in doing that as well, I'm happy to share. But this is stitching up super quickly. I think if I worked on this, I'm so sorry. It's so, it's wrinkled the hill, but it's fine. Um, if you're interested, um, well, I totally lost the thread of what I was saying. Um, anyway, that being said, I think I could get this done if I focused on it for another week. I just have to finish filling in the actual pages of the books, which is in that milkshake color. And then I just have the quote left. I mean, the stitch was like insanely quick, especially with the Ada, you don't have to do as much counting or as much worrying. 
and I think I'm going to attempt to stitch it in hand. Um, although this is an 18 count parchment aid. I don't think I said what it was, um, by Forbidden Fiber. Uh, and on 18 count, I can never decide what kind of coverage I like. So I'm doing two strands on this piece. Um, and I like the way it's looking, but it's also like super freaking bulky. Um, I don't love the look of two strands on 18 count, but I also don't love this look of one strand on 18 count. Uh, which is a, a difficult place to be in with a project like this. So I'm doing it two over one because I figured if it was a little bit more coverage, it would look good. This is going to be like a little fun pillow. I'm not taking this pattern too seriously. I'm just happy to get it, you know, out of my kit pile so I can, you know, work on it a little bit. And it's, again, it's nice to have an Ada project on the go for those times that you want to stitch, but you don't necessarily have the energy to count over two. You don't have the light, the necessary things. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to like Ada. I, I'm not someone who discriminates on fabric. Um, and I like the look of Ada just like I like the, like the look of linen, good lord. Um, so anyway, that was my new start and I am, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's not going to be a start for a long or a whip for very long because it's such a small pattern. And Again, I don't have a lot of small patterns on the go, so having something like this, if I needed to push for a quick finish, if I needed that validation that comes from, you know, a, uh, a, a finish, then I have an option for that. Okay, so that's all my new starts. Uh, I, ha I worked on three whips this week in the last eight days or however long it's been. Um, so I... Worked on my Summer Quakers. This is a stitch along that I am hosting with Megan Babauta, the Seattle stitcher, who if you have not checked out yet, what are you doing? Uh, go check out Megan, she's fantastic. So uh, I will insert a picture of what that looks like here. Um, this is a project bag that I made myself out of some Lori Holt fabric. I think the fabric line is stitch. So uh, Summer Quaker style, you can still participate. We are still working on it. Um, my goal is to be halfway done with this piece by the end of the summer. So that maybe next summer I can get a finish on it. But here's where I'm at on it. I didn't work on this very much. I think only like two days this week and it was like a smaller stitching day. Um, but I did finish this motif here, this little floral basket, and I started working on this bumblebee. So again, not very much, but progress is progress, right? So I'm stitching this on a 28 count coastal linen by Picture This Plus, which is a gorgeous sky blue. It is not the called for, but I am absolutely obsessed with the way it's turning out. And then um, I'm using all of the called for Valdani, Valdani flosses, like a three stranded cotton, I think. Which three strands after stitching 40 count for a little bit. I think that's why I didn't get very much progress on this is I've been really, really loving stitching with one strand of floss and this is not one strand. It's not like three strands is a lot of floss. I mean, it looks great. Don't get me wrong, but it feels a little bulky. It's a little hard to get the stitches to lay perfect. It'll be fine when it's done. It's just the process of stitching with a three stranded floss is not my favorite, but it's fine because I only have to do four whole pieces with it, right? Because I'm stitching all of the seasonal Quakers by Rosewood Manor. So I will be working on this one for the month of August. And then um, once the month of August is over and September starts, I'm going to start Autumn Quakers because I'm going to work on each of these seasonal Quakers in the season that they are. So once summer's over, this one's gonna go in hibernation for a little while until next, until next June, yeah. So that's why I'm trying to get halfway through. I figure if I can get halfway through it in this season, maybe next summer I could have it finished. We'll see. But anyway, uh, join our stitch along. It's super fun. And I've been loving seeing all of your guys' progress on it. It's absolutely such a fun stitch and I'm so excited for how it's gonna turn out. Although I am debating, so on the pattern, on the bottom, there's an Algerian eyelet alphabet, which is a little like, a little scary. Um, so maybe I won't do that. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing Smyrna crosses instead of Algerian eyelets, maybe doing, um, like recharting a quote about summer instead of doing the alphabet. 
I don't know. I'm, I've got, obviously I have plenty of time until uh, that becomes something I have to think about. But uh, I think I started that one on June 25th. So I think I forgot to say that. Anyway, I worked on that for like two days. Um, this whip, I got so much progress on. And I don't think I've showed this one in a minute. Maybe I did last time. I don't actually remember. Anyway, this is a bushel and a peck by La Vie Da. I'm stitching this one for my mom and I got so much done on this one. Um, so I will see if I have a picture of where I was last time. I don't think I do though. Um, anyway, here's where I got into. So the last time that you saw this piece, I had finished color completing the green, I color completed the red, and I had the quote finished. So um, since I have seen you last, I have color completed all of the gold. So and I recharted the initials. So a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, the designer has initials and a and a year of when she designed it. And it's a major feature of the pattern, but she didn't include an alphabet, which is fine. Like, obviously I can handle doing a recharting of my initials here. But if I was like a newbie beginner and this was the first cross stitch pattern I fell in love with, that would be a huge barrier to stitching. Anyway, um, soapbox done. I, I kind of tried to make it match the whimsical feel of the rest of the lettering. You know, I have the lowercase b and the uppercase h and they're kind of interlocking. The twos are pretty symmetrical, but what you gonna do. So I'm locked into finishing it this year now, which I don't think will be a problem. So I went through color completed all the gold. I finished the dark X's inside of all of the flowers and I completed the entire outer border. So all I have left to do now is there's like a swirly border that goes around this inner border and then one more, like just one stitch rectangle that goes around that. And this will be done and I can finally gift it. I still don't know how I'm gonna FFO it, so if you have any FFO ideas for this one, let me know. If not, that's totally fine. I can figure it out. I can't drum finish it because it's too squared, but I think it'd be a little big for a flat fold. I don't know, we'll see. I prefer like horizontally laying flat folds. This one's a, a vertical pattern. I was thinking maybe about trying to find like a picture frame, you know, one of those picture frames that has like a spot for your photo and then like a bunch of blank space like a wood piece and then maybe like doing a, a family photo and then this next to it. I don't know. And I moved my Penelope pit stop needle minder over here. Okay. So, um, I figured I'd take this moment to kind of talk about the nerd hoops. I get a lot of comments asking what my thoughts are on these, uh, nerd hoops and whether or not I love them, what I think. So I figured I'd take a moment to kind of talk about, Oh, Oh, hold on. I started this on May 5th of 2022. So it's been a whip for a couple months now. But anyway, okay, so nurch hoops. So I have two nurch hoops. I have this one and then I have a, one of the larger sizes, the largest size I think they come in. And uh, my definitive review is they're okay. <laughs> um, so I love how lightweight they are. I like how flat they are. They're really easy to hold. They're really comfortable in your hand. You get a lot of stitching space on them. Um, you can kind of orient them horizontally, which I did. I took my Miss Bingley's library on the plane in this hoop because this is a lot easier to travel with than a Q-snap is. It's not as bulky. It fits really well in like a smaller vinyl front project bag. Um, my one problem with this is the tension. So I prefer a drum tight tension on a, on a hoop or a frame. And this one, I can get about 90% of the way there. So like it's tight. I'm comfortable stitching on it. Obviously it makes a little bit of a drum sound, but even with this, I mean, I have this thing ratcheted as screwed in as I can get it. I've been like tugging on it, but every time I tug on it, it just goes back. Um, and I can like depress it just a little bit. So, um, moral of the story is I'm going to keep using it, but I don't think I'll buy more. And the largest size is a bit disappointing. I can't get tension on that one. I'd say, so this one's probably about 90% drum tight, whereas like a Q-snap with good margins and a little bit of batting is like 100% drum tight. This one's about 90%, um, just enough to bother me. <laughs> That's basically the, the moral of the story. It's just loose enough to bother me. Um, but the largest one I'd say is probably close, closer to a 75% drum tightness. Um, 
but I do enjoy stitching my Mirabilia in that. My Mirabilia fabric is pretty thick, so it's able to grip it a little bit better than it does like a thinner linen. I don't know. So anyway, that's my definitive review of the Nerd Hoop. If you're interested in checking them out, I think they're pretty cheap and you can make your own opinion. I would get the size number three. I would not get the size number four. Um, I, you get a good stitching space with this one. I am a little bit nervous about putting it on top of previously done stitches because it does clamp it so tight. Um, I've been using this on projects where I haven't had to do that. So if you put nerd hoops on top of existing stitching, let me know how that goes, especially if it's not like a 40 count one strand like this is, which I think I forgot to tell you what I'm stitching this on and what I'm stitching it with. This is a 40 count Mallow Linen by Zweigart, and I'm doing a partial thread conversion. This is two of the called for, and then just two things I pulled from Stash. If you would like to know what they are specifically, I will um, message me on Instagram and I'll, I'll send you my conversion. But this is a, the red's a forbidden fiber company and the gold is just another DMC. So anyway, that's my definitive review of the Nerd Hoops. Check them out if you want to, but um, if you're someone who likes absolutely as tight as you can get the fabric this isn't going to be your girl so i enjoy it i i think i'll travel with it i'll definitely keep using it but i again i'm not going to like these aren't going to be my end all be all they are just they're they're good they're not great but because i bought it i'm going to keep using it and i do think it has its moments where it does kind of outshine the Q-snap a little bit, but I do I do still prefer the tightness I can get with a Q-snap. I do prefer how close I can get to the margin on this one. You know, like a Q-snap, you have like an inch where you can't use it because you can't thread your needle behind the fabric to like secure your stitches. This one doesn't have that same problem. So anyway, that's my definitive review of the Nerd Hoops if you're interested. Okay, and I only worked on one more whip. This is my Miss Bingley's Library by Plum Street Samplers. When did I start this? Uh, I started this on July 2nd of 2022 and I'm stitching mine on a 36 count limited edition color and cotton linen with all of the called for flosses. And I did get a, um, I'm trying to move a thread here. I did get a good chunk of stuff done on this one. Um, this was my plane stitching. I did take this project on the plane. I worked on it on the first day we flew. While I was in the airport, our flight kept getting delayed. It was this big, huge thing. But the benefits of having stitching with you is you can kind of just stitch through your flight delays and it kind of works out. So here is where I've gotten to. So I believe since the last time that you've seen this, I stitched the smoke lines. I added in, there's a little cat here. I'm thinking I'm going to have to frog him though and change him to a different color. I tried to use the light gray that's called for, which is Weeks Dye Works 10 Roof, but... Um, She's not showing up super great. Uh, and then I finished the stacks of books here. I still need to do the girl and her teacup and things. And I started filling in the roof line. So I got both of the chimneys completely filled in and the roof down, roof line down into the window, which was, I mean, it's a lot of fill in. Uh, so I'm probably about halfway through with the roof fill in. Okay, Fergus, um, I'm about halfway through Come on. I'm about halfway through with the roof fill in and that's, that's a good place to be for now in my opinion. Hold on, cat. Um, I would like to be a little further on this pattern. Fergus, say hello. Um, anyway, that's my one-eyed kitty Fergus. He just woke up, I guess. Um, anyway, yeah, this was a great, I mean, fill in in an airport is probably about the best thing you can do cross stitch wise, right? Um, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to pull out extra floss. You don't have to pull out extra materials. You can just go. You do get some weird looks from the people in the terminal, but it's fine. So anyway, I'm loving how this is turning out and I can't wait to stitch the quote that goes on this one. But this was a total start that was inspired by my friend, the Seattle Stitcher and can't speak highly about this stitch enough. I, I've made a lot of changes to it, but we can go over those more when I finish it. And then I did end up taking these little tiny scissors that I got off of Amazon on the plane with me and they worked just fine. They are super sharp. So um, I'm gonna keep using them even not as like just plain scissors. Like they're great scissors in general. Like if you're looking for good scissors for your embroidery project bags, they're good scissors. So I will um, try and find the link and link it down below. 
but no promises. So those were all of the whips that I worked on in last week. Again, it's not a lot of progress, but it's more than I thought I would have, um, especially it being like a trip where I traveled. Oh my God. Cats. Um, okay, so let's do my haul and then we will do the giveaway. And I do have one book to mention and one floss tube to tell you about. Just kind of normal things. So uh, outside of my trip to the attic, I did pick up a couple of things. So I got the Elvis kit. Uh, this is the Blue Suede Shoes kit from Forbidden Fiber Company. It's their Elvis inspired box. Um, my mom is the biggest Elvis fan on the planet. So this bag is going back to her when I'm done stitching it and the stitch pattern will go to her as well. So it's like a little gift for both of us. You know what I mean? Um, so this is super cute. Here are all of the call for flosses for the pattern. Um, they're all from their regular line except for one that's called Blue Suede Shoes, which was dyed specifically for the box. Um, they're super fun. I love a good blue floss. That's kind of one of my favorite colors to stitch with. The needle minder is a little blue Hawaii Elvis. The fabric is absolutely stunning. It's this gorgeous light gray blue and it's called Roustabout, which I believe is what the title of one of Elvis's movies. And then the pattern that came with this one is called Blue Suede Shoes. And I love the little silhouette of Elvis. Again, silhouettes with quotes, Forbidden Fiber Company, they're great. So um, I'm gonna be stitching this for my mom and uh, and then she'll get the, the bag will go to her. It'll be like a little makeup bag for her or something. Oh my gosh, Fergus. Chill. So I bought that, I'm super happy with it and I can't wait to start it and gift it to her. Okay, so then I got a couple of charts so i got this is totally inspired by carrie at tiger lily designs um you guys know how much i love carrie i'm going to talk about her more and as, as we get to the giveaway portion of today come on buddy but we uh she stitched the brenda gervais summer schoolhouse series and i saw it and i was like oh i need that so i found it on farm girl dry goods which was a great shop her, she shipped it so freaking fast so anyway i got this so I'm super excited to start this piece. I loved the way it looked. Um, I'm not, okay, so the theme of this video is I'm not an alphabets pan, fan of, in cross stitch patterns. Like I'm not usually drawn to projects that have like a large alphabet or just lots of alphabets. I bought like eight things that have alphabets. So apparently I love it now. So anyway, I have this one. I don't know when I'll start it, but I got it. I kit it up. Olivia Aquarelief by Silver Creek Samplers. I love this pattern. I think it's so fun. I love the way the text goes. I love the way her dress is made up of all of the falling leaves. It's a little like, I'm thinking I might do a skin conversion on her and make her look a little bit like Pocahontas because I get a lot of Pocahontas, like Disney Pocahontas vibes, not like historical Pocahontas vibes, which are very different. Um, Anyway, I love this pattern, so I kitted it up. I got all the call for flosses just in the bag with the pattern, and I just need to pick out a fabric for it. But anyway, got that. Um, and then I got some threads for a project that I bought. I bought the Autumnal Alphabet. Who was it by? Um, I forget who it's by, but I will put it, oh my God, Fergus, you're gonna destroy my whole section. Okay. Um, I'm so sorry. Freaking hot mess cat over here is trying to interrupt my video flow. Um, anyway, I'll put who it's by on the screen because I can't remember, but it's the most adorable little pattern. I saw it on um, Mountain Laurel Stitches, uh, which I will tell you about later because she's my floss tube recommendation for the week. Um, but anyway, we're going to stitch it together, I think. So <laughs> hashtag blue pumpkin sale. Anyway, I got some of the call for threads for that, which are gentle arts. So Anyway, I bought that and some of the flosses. I bought Penny Pumpkin by The Scarlet House. A good little Thanksgiving small. Again, I've been trying to beef up my small patterns and this one was kind of in my one, two, three whoop stitch wish list. I got a Mirabilia. I've been working on just buying the Mirabilias I like because if they go out of print, I don't want to be stuck without them. So I got deck. Oh my gosh. You know what? I started off this video so strong and I'm so hot mess by the end of it. It's fine. This is Deco Spirits. I'm obsessed with these guys. And I want to stitch them like in one long row or in one vertical thing. So anyway, I got Deco Spirits, um, which 
brings me to a question. So for those of you who work with Krynic a lot or with metallic threads, can you do metallic threads on a 36 count or a 40 count? Because I would love to do these with one strand of floss and um, not with two. <laughs> um, so because it's a mirabilia, it doesn't have beads. So if you've done these and you've done them on like a high count of fabric, let me know, please, because I would also love to do that. So I picked that up. I got Little House Needleworks, the library. Love this chart. I am planning on changing a couple of the boxes to fit more of the genres that I read personally. But my friend, the Seattle Stitcher, shows this one too, and so I had to get it. Okay, and then I believe I got one more thing that's not part of my attic haul, and then the rest of it is all about my trip to the attic. So um, while I was on Farm Girl Dry Goods, I did not want my um, Summer Schoolhouse series to ship by itself. So um, I also got Marianne Farmer by The Scarlet House. I'm not... Okay, so typically I don't stitch a lot of uh, historical reproduction samplers. I do love them. I love the way that they look, but they typically have a lot of alphabets or a lot of people. And I don't like stitching people and I don't like stitching alphabets, um, regardless of the fact that I bought like eight charts that had alphabets. Um, but this one had no people and no alphabet and it's all florals. And I love the way it looks like these little rose baskets is why I bought it. And this center one. So anyway, I thought I would kind of dip into historical samplers or reproduction samplers because I haven't in the past. And it's a rather large part of cross stitch that I haven't done. And being a historian myself, I really should get into those because, because I'm a historian and blah, 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 blah. I like the old things. Anyway, okay, so the attic. So my trip to the attic almost didn't happen. So my brother and I flew out to Arizona on a Friday and we've had an early flight and so the plan was to kind of fly in get lunch with our grandfather who lives there um this is my arizona family uh my grandmother who lived out there she's the one who passed away she's the one who taught me how to quilt and had this huge love of crafting so it was our first time visiting um post her funeral and we were just going to spend some time with our grandpa and all those kinds of things he's the most spry 90 year old you've ever met but anyway we were gonna have lunch with grandpa and then we had the rest of the day to ourselves before we met um, one of my uncles and aunts for dinner. And so we were going to go kind of run errands, make our, you know, snack run and all of those kinds of things. And I told him, my brother, that I really wanted to go to this needlework store. And he was like, of course, like I'll video some B-roll of you shopping if you want to for your floss tube channel. And I was like, oh, that would be great because my brother is also my tech support when it comes to floss tubing and video making and all of those kinds of things. And he's fabulous for that. So anyway, we had this great plan. I wake up at 5 a.m. to get ready and finish packing. And uh, I wake up to a text saying our flight was canceled. <laughs> so uh, Southwest Airlines, their customer service was fantastic. They were able to get us rebooked on a flight that left at about 11.50 which still puts us like with the time difference from Texas to Arizona, it still put us getting there in plenty of time to still do things, you know, later lunch or having to skip lunch with grandpa, but still getting to run our errands. So we get to the airport, our flight gets delayed four more times on top of that. So we don't end up leaving until like almost 1.30, 1.40. So we don't fly in until late. Um, we touch down in Arizona and the attic wasn't going to happen. Basically, by the time we got our baggage, the attic had closed because um, they're only open on Fridays and Saturdays unless you make an appointment. So I missed my chance to go to the attic and I thought it just wasn't going to happen this trip. And um, Saturday, we'd planned this whole big pool party with grandpa over at his house that was starting at like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to the attic at 10. I will be late to the pool party, but I'm going to go. It might just be for a little bit, but I'm going to make it happen. So I Ubered from our hotel over. My brother went ahead and went over to grandpa's and kind of was like, Bridget's gonna be here, but she's gonna be late. And I went to the attic and I could not be more happy that I did it. Um, I was rushed because I was, I knew family was waiting on me. And uh, luckily the attic is only like 10 minutes from my grandpa's house. So it was kind of like on the way from my hotel to grandpa's. It was the best case scenario, but I was rushed walking through. So I did miss some stuff. And I, my hall's not as big as it probably could have been if I would have had, you know, more unlimited time. But that being said, I did make it there. It was fabulous, you guys. Your recommendation was amazing. The ladies there, we talked for a little bit before I started shopping. They gave me like a like a whole rundown of how the store was laid out 
and then gave me some time to browse, helped me cut fabric, all of those kinds of things. So it was an amazing trip. I highly recommend it if you have not gone and I'm going to show you what I got. So first thing I got was a little Halloween piece. This is Jack's Urn by Kathy Barrick. I just love the way this giant pumpkin and this little house and this big ass basket. Anyway, I thought it was so cool and I've been eyeing this pattern for a while so I picked that one up. Then um, I wanted to get this one. So this is Silver Creek Samplers When Life Is Done. It is, um, I'm sure you've seen this, it's a big grief piece. Um, but I figured I should go ahead and get it and kit it up so that if I ever do feel the need to stitch this to work through something or if something happens to someone and I'd like to stitch this for them, I have it ready to go so I don't have to make a needlework store trip. <laughs> that being said, on the day my grandmother passed away, I did make a needlework store trip to kit up something to stitch in memory of her. <laughs> that being said, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and kit this and have it ready to go for when the time, for when the time comes that this sampler is necessary. I love the way it looks. Um, and then I wanted to get a couple patterns from, they have designers that they say is like the designer that's in their backyard. Um, so I did get a couple charts from the Scarlet House who's apparently local to the attic. So uh, I saw the model for this one and I was like, oh, that's, done, that's a done deal. This is We Are The Sampler Makers. I'm going to be purchasing the little wood piece it goes on too. So it's this big whole quote about like how needleworkers make things so that they'll live on through their needlework and I just loved it. I thought it was so fun. It's gonna stitch up fast cause it's mostly text. So I'm super pumped about this one. And then I got another Scarlet House. I have the pattern somewhere else because I'm um, like make, taking pictures of it so I can work off of it digitally uh, because I don't like working off of paper patterns because my cat will sit on it and crinkle the paper and I hate crinkle paper so much. Um, anyway, I wanted to completely kit something up while I was there. So I wanted to kind of, you know, see a pattern, buy a pattern, buy the fabric and the floss there. Their fabrics were amazing. They had fox and rabbit fabric. So um, I bought the floral motif sampler by Scarlet House. I've been eyeing that pattern for a really long time anyway. And I was like, you know what? I'm kidding this right here, right now. I wanted to start it while I was in Arizona. So it would kind of be my Arizona start, but I didn't but I found the perfect cut of fabric for it. This is 40 Count Flannel Flower by Fox and Rabbit. I've been trying to get my hands on this fabric for so long and I walked by the table and they had it and I was like, oh my gosh, give me all that you have. So anyway, it's got this gorgeous modeling and I think the floral motif sampler is gonna look super great on it. So I snatched that as quickly as I could and I got some of the call for floss. Unfortunately, they didn't have everything that was called for for this pattern. Um, there's quite a few gentle arts that are called for. I wanted to do it in the fancy flosses, so I got a few and I will end up getting um, the rest. I have, okay, so I ended up finding the rest. I got some from Top Knot Stitcher. I got some coming from a random store on Etsy because Buckeye Scarlet and Cast Iron Skillet are really hard to get your hands on right now. Or at least they were for me trying to find none of my regular shops that I go. F I typically go Top Knot Stitcher, one, two, three Stitch, and then Fat Quarter Shop. Um, anyway, so I got that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start that pretty soon. And then I just grabbed one more cut of linen. I don't have a plan for it. But I saw it and I was like, oh, that's a great neutral. And I think it looks a little bit like Saltbush from Fox and Rabbit. But this is Boardwalk by Color and Cotton. This just gorgeous kind of greeny gray brown. It looks more green on and like more khaki on camera. It's a little darker, but it's a 40 count and it's a fat quarter. So I don't know what I'll do for this yet, but I figured it was good to grab it. And then um, I, I was watching The Attic. They have a floss tube. And so I was watching their floss tube this week and they showed this sampler that is exclusive to The Attic. Um, that I somehow missed and I don't know how I missed it. So I filled out their little mail-in order form and hopefully um, I will hear back from them soon about whether or not they can get that up for me. But if they do, I'm gonna count it as part of my attic haul because it will come from the attic and it will have been within like a week of me being there. So I'm gonna count it. But anyway, it is the um, In the Butterfly's Garden sampler. I don't know that there's a picture of it um, but if you're interested in seeing what it looks like, you can go check out the Attic's Floss Tube. It's, again, it's an alphabet sampler. It's a historical reproduction sampler. I think it's Italian in origin, 
but it's this gorgeous like plummy purples and teals and greens and it's this like super scrolly lovely alphabet anyway I'm hoping they'll get that up for me um, on like a 56 count fabric but we will see so anyway that was my haul from the attic again I know it's like two cuts of fabric a few flosses and like four charts but I was rushed and I'm gonna be visiting more family in May so I will definitely make a more concerted trip and I won't plan to do it on the day our flights are <laughs> So that flight schedules won't mess up my cross stitch shopping because it was a whole big thing. So anyway, that's everything floss tube, normal floss tube wise. I have the giveaway, I have a book, and I have a new floss tube to tell you about. So let me tell you about the new floss tube, then we'll do the giveaway, and then I'll talk about books. So floss tube I want to tell you about is Mountain Laurel Stitches. I just discovered her channel, and I don't know how I've been missing her. She's an elementary school librarian, and her stitching is absolutely lovely. Her personality is great. I, like, binge-watched all of her videos after I found her for the first time. Um, she's also working on Halloween Quakers, and hers is absolutely stunning. It's so pretty. And she does a lot of, like, autumnal and cat-themed patterns, which kind of my jam. So anyway, if you haven't checked her out yet, go check her out. Her channel's, her channel's great. I'm sure a lot of you already know who she is, but if you don't like me, um, go find her. So I will link her channel down below if you're interested. So giveaway, let's do giveaway. So this is a freaking great giveaway. So thank you guys so much. Um, a few rules about the giveaway up front. I'm going to ask you to insert a code word in your comments, and then I will use the random YouTube comment picker to um, kind of figure all of that out once the things are done. So I have a couple giveaways that will be open internationally, a couple that will just be for the US. And yeah, um, it's gonna be a, a really great giveaway. So you might wanna grab a post-it note and a pencil or something to write down all the words that you have to say because there's quite a few items in this giveaway. Um, I believe this giveaway, let me check my calendar real quick. This is going to be closing um on let's see today is the 31st this giveaway will be closing on august 13th of 2022 so please have your comments in by then um that's what i'm gonna film and kind of decide it'll give you plenty of time to watch um i i would like this giveaway to just be for subscribers so please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and like this video and then um leave the whatever word you would like to win and i will uh get that going so giveaways. Let's start with a very exciting Abby Topknot at Topknot Stitcher Shop. Y'all know how much I love her. She's fantastic. Her customer service is absolutely amazing and I love her shop. She reached out to me and donated a $20 Topknot Stitcher gift card for you guys to win. So um, a little bit of note about this. There is a couple special parameters for this gift card. So the gift card is open for anything in her shop if you live in the U.S. and Canada. That's currently where she's shipping. But if you are international and you'd still like to win the Top Knot Stitcher gift card, she will send you um, her PDF patterns that she has designed herself, which her designs are so cute and fun um, in exchange for that gift card. So if you're interested in winning Abby's design specifically and you live internationally, you can enter to win this. Um, but just know that if you're international and you win the gift card, you will only be able to use it on Abby's designs um, in PDF form. They won't be, she won't be able to just like do anything from her shop and ship it to you. Okay. But if you live in the U.S. and Canada, that gift card will be good on anything in Abby's shop. So if you'd like to win the Top Knot Stitcher gift card, please use the code word JAM. Abby's cat is named JAM and this video has had a lot of cats <laughs> happen to it. So uh, yeah, use the word jam if you would like to enter to win that one. So then I have two very special giveaways that I've put a lot of work and a lot of my own time into. I have made two project keepers for you guys. This is based on a pattern by Tiger Lily Designs, Carrie at Tiger Lily Designs, and I did reach out to her and I got special permission to give away a few that I had made by my own hand. She does sell them in her shop, so if you don't win the giveaway but you still want one of these, you can go check out Tiger Lily Designs. I believe she's gearing up for her August release of Project Keepers. They're fantastic. So I've made two of the bobbinated versions and let me show you kind of what comes in these. So here's the first one. You're gonna use the code word BLUE, B-L-U-E for this one. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite fabrics. Both of these, you will notice, in addition to my headband today, 
they're Pioneer Woman fabrics that you can just get at your local Walmart. But um, the Pioneer Woman holds a special place in my heart. My mom and I, uh, we go for a lot of Pioneer Woman trips. We go down to her mercantile in Oklahoma and just have like a girls trip every year. We have for the last six years. So it's very special to me and I love florals. So you guys are gonna get some florals. So anyway, option one, code word blue. It's got this gorgeous print. I did not quilt the back. It's just quilted on the front where the bobbin slots are. But when you open it up, it's got a nice snap closure. And these are the interior fabrics. So I have chosen this lovely blue. I put the in uh, the outside fabric here. It's got a slip pocket for your patterns that holds like a full paper pattern. And then it's got a zip pocket here that has this lovely bird fabric on the interior. And you will notice there is a set of Tiger Lily project information cards that she also gave me. And so each project keeper will come with Tiger Lily project information cards. And then in every single one of these bobbin slots, I have included a floss drop from Adam Hart Cross Stitch. So these are her floss bobbins. They are floss drops that you can wind and insert in here so that you can keep yourself bobbinated but also stitch from floss drops. Y'all know how much I love them. I talk about them all the time. So I purchased those myself and included them in here. So it'll be a fully functional thing. All you have to do is provide the floss and fabric. So whatever project you would like to put in here, you can fully kit something up with the bobbins and everything from this. So the other one is the exact same way. You're gonna use the code word green, G-R-E-E-N for this one. Uh, and it's the same exact thing. It's got the Adam Hart floss drops. It has the project information card. It's just a different fabric line or a different section of fabrics. I'm obsessed with this one. I would have put it on the exterior if I wasn't worried that my quilting lines would be wonky on it because it's a straight line pattern. Anyway, it's got this lovely pink floral, some gingham, and that again, slip pocket, zipper pocket, bobbin slots. The bobbin slots have the floss bobbins in them. So anyway, yeah, the words blue and green will get you these two. And these two are only open for the U.S. because it is a large package that I have to ship. And I may or may not throw in a, a pattern with each one of these as well, but I have not decided yet. So um, the only caveat that I have is you can't criticize my binding, okay? Quilt binding and I have a very tempestuous relationship. I don't enjoy doing it. And whenever I get my quilts quilted, I have my long arm or do my binding for me because... I'm a perfectionist and it bothers me when it's not perfect. So anyway, they're not perfect bindings, but they're functional bags and the fabrics are cute. So you're not allowed to criticize my binding skills if you win this, but be, please be in the US to win these. So this is the biggest part of the giveaway. But when I reached out to Carrie at Tiger Lily Designs and I asked her if I could give away some project keepers that I'd made, um, she actually, so she sent me the project information cards and then she sent also she is going to be giving away three pdf sewing patterns of this so if you are someone who makes project bags if you're someone who sews um and you would like to win the actual pattern to make these yourself carrie is donating three of those so please use the word tiger in your comment if you would like to win those um, sewing patterns. So there's three of them available. I'll choose three winners with that code word. Um, and that is open internationally because all you need is an email address. And when you win that, I'll get your email from you and I will pass that on to Carrie and she will email you your sewing pattern. So you will need a sewing machine and a, a little bit of a know-how on how to use it, but included in that sewing pattern is actually an exclusive link to a video tutorial that goes step-by-step step in how you make these. They're really not that complicated. Um, the most difficult part is the quilt binding. Um, and you should probably have a little bit of a knowledge on how to work with vinyl. Um, you need a Teflon foot for your machine so it doesn't like stick to it. Vinyl can be a little tricky, but honestly, it's not that bad. And I think anyone can do it. So yes, so anyway, top mass stitcher gift card, we're jam. The word blue, the word green, the um, and the word tiger, if you'd like to win the sewing patterns. So those are all of the giveaways today. Please be a subscriber. Please don't use the word giveaway in your comment or win or anything like that. Don't bring in the bots. You need to be 18 or older so that I can get your address from you or your email address from you. And um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's all the rules. You guys... Um, I mentioned whether or not you're international or domestic. 
based on the individual item that you are applying for the giveaway for. So. Plans wise, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, I am working on filming a video that talks about my stash organization and my stitchy spot, but I am waiting for my lap stand to get here so I can kind of do a little bit of a lap stand review during that video as well. So I'm working on that. Um, I might be back next weekend uh, to talk about some other stuff. My filming schedule, I think for the month of August is gonna be a little strange. Oh, books, books. Um, okay, so I have one book to tell you about and it is a doozy of a book recommendation. So this is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Please read this, <laughs> it is so freaking good. Um, I am a huge fan of Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've read her other books as well. I, I thought Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was my favorite and I think this might have overtaken it. Um, if you are an eldest daughter <laughs> and you have siblings, uh, this book's gonna hit you hard. <laughs> Just gonna say that. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more um, light reading than it was. But anyway, it was a fantastic book. I read it in like two days, like I, I absorbed it. I had a, one of my viewers tell me I had to read it and it was already on my TBR. So uh, this, that was my travel book that I listened to on the airplane and it was a mistake because I ended up crying in the airport. It's fine, it's fine. Anyway, it follows the, it's four siblings they are the children of a famous singer. If you've read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, um, it's one of her husbands, <laughs> Mick Riva. It's all of his kids, not with Evelyn. Um, but anyway, all of his kids. And it's kind of their story. It follows them uh, a little bit through their life, but also kind of like goes hour by hour through this big party that they throw. And everything kind of comes full circle at the end. It was so freaking good. I, I don't have words. Um... So yeah, go read it if you have not checked it out already. Okay, books are done, floss tube is done, all the things, I've shown all the things. Okay, so uh, that being said, you guys have a great week. I will be back when I'm back. Um, again, filming schedule is gonna be strange. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, hit that subscribe and like button if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Happy stitching, y'all.